This video is sponsored by Grammarly. It's a writing assistant I've been using that offers suggestions that go way beyond grammar. Go to grammarly.com slash company man to sign up for an account and new customers will get 20% off Grammarly Premium. The link is in the description. Delta. Over the past few decades, you've probably known them as one of the world's biggest airlines. I mean, by almost any measure, they have consistently been in the top five, and some measures, such as revenue, have placed them in the number one spot. But what you may not know about them is that this is one of the biggest comeback stories over the past few decades. Despite maintaining that high market share, they have gone through some tough times. In 2005, they filed for bankruptcy, as did many other airlines at the time. But this one was after more than a decade of struggle and filled with uncertainty as to how they would come out of it. During that bankruptcy, which by the way was the ninth largest in US history at the time, a competing airline called US Airways was actively trying to buy them in a hostile takeover. It was big news because the combination of the two would have resulted in the largest airline in the world. They offered $8 billion and then $10 billion, but Delta was able to remain independent and emerge from the bankruptcy not even two years later. From that point, they made some major changes that I would say have resulted in an impressive comeback. They have doubled in size, reversed the trend to become more profitable than ever, and have built up a positive reputation. So in this video, I want to talk about all of it. How they got so big in the first place, where things went wrong, and how they recovered from it. The roots of this company actually go back to the 1920s and are a direct result of a scary looking bug called the Bull Weevil. <laughs> These things were bad news. See, in the late 1800s, they first made their way up north from Mexico into the United States. I guess an international traveler themselves. But by the early 1920s, they had become a major threat to cotton crops in the south and therefore the economy in general. They would kill the plants by eating them and laying their eggs in them. It was looking like the solution would be a pesticide called calcium arsenate, but the issue was how to spray it all over the crops. The mules and whatever else they were using were slow and inefficient, so then an entomologist, which is like an insect expert, named Dr. B. R. Code had an idea of using an airplane. After some initial tests, he teamed up with an airplane manufacturer named Huff Deland to design a plane specifically used for spraying chemicals across crops. The end result was a biplane modified with spraying equipment that they used as the basis for a new division of the company called a Huff Deland Dusters, which is recognized as the first ever crop dusting service. A man named C. E. Woolman joined them as the chief entomologist, where he helped them expand to 18 of those planes, which actually was the largest privately owned fleet of aircraft. By 1928, Woolman got together with some local investors to essentially purchased that crop dusting company. Soon after he took control, it was renamed Delta Air Service based on where they operated the Mississippi Delta. So that's the formation. The following year, they offered their first ever passenger flights between Dallas, Texas and Jackson, Mississippi. In 1934, they were awarded their first airmail contract from the U.S. Post Office, followed by many others, all while continuing the crop dusting service until 1966. Meaning within their first few years, they were already taking shape and doing everything. In the following decade, that continued to grow into a major airline. One of the biggest reasons that I would say they were successful in that time was their conservative approach. Now, they did acquire some other airlines as a way to expand their reach into new areas of the country and grow overall. They bought Chicago and Southern Airlines in 1953, Northeast Airlines in 1972, Western Airlines in 1986, all the cardinal directions, but were slow and methodical and never overreaching. The same thing goes for when they bought the aircraft themselves, so they never had much debt to worry about. Some some other factors would be their positive reputation, they were a pioneer in implementing the now popular hub and spoke system, you know, that's where the flights all go in and out of the hub rather than directly between the cities. To put it simple, they were innovative, conservative, and well liked, but the 1990s is where they first started running into trouble. So right here, I'm going to give you 5 reasons behind their decline, followed by 5 reasons behind their recovery. Starting off with over expanding, and the main thing I'm pointing to here is in 1991 when they paid $1.4 billion dollars to buy a bunch of assets from Pan Am. They were another airline that was crumbling at the time, and Delta saw this as a good opportunity, and I'm not saying that it was irresponsible. The main reason they wanted to buy it was to further break into the European market. They acquired a bunch of European routes as well as a hub in Germany, but they did pay a lot for it. They outbid all of these other major airlines, which was uncharacteristic of them. As part of that deal, they assumed over $600 million in debt, and the timing of it could have been better. The economy was slow, the Persian Gulf War had made people 
people hesitant to fly, so it put them in a tricky position. In that year, they reported a net loss and continued to lose over $2.5 billion over those next four years. Which leads right into my next reason, customer and employee issues. Again, uncharacteristic of them. See, to address the losses, they implemented this program that was very aggressive in cutting their expenses. They actually ended some of those European routes, they cut 20% of their workforce and made a few other changes that sacrificed their reputation, in a sense, for lower costs. And it did work, they quickly started making money again, but it may not have been the most stable or long-term solution. There's gonna be more on that, but my next reason behind their decline is world events. I already mentioned how the Persian Gulf War complicated things in the early 1990s, but the early 2000s was considerably worse. Obviously, the 9-11 attack reduced air travel, and then Hurricane Katrina reduced the fuel supply. Delta's revenue dropped in 2001, and even going into the bankruptcy five years later, had yet to fully recover. And these were all things that hurt the entire industry, but as I said, Delta had lost some stability over that past decade, so they were especially vulnerable to things like this. Another thing affecting the entire industry at the time was high fuel costs. Typically one of the biggest expenses for an airline, and in the years leading up to that bankruptcy, they were just skyrocketing. Finally, they were affected negatively by competition from cheaper airlines. I'm talking about these low-cost airlines like JetBlue that were really emerging in the early 2000s as an attractive option for anyone who just wanted a basic cheap flight. Delta's biggest response to this may not have been the best one, but it was actually to start their own budget airline called Song in 2003. It quickly grew to a fleet of 48 planes before being completely shut down during the bankruptcy in 2006. It's unclear for sure if they were ever profitable, but I don't see how they could have been. That airline within an airline concept tends to be tricky with the branding and competing flights, and they did shut it down pretty quick. So the big picture here is that there were all these factors lowering their sales while rising their costs, meaning Delta was not making any money. From 2001 through the bankruptcy, they were reporting some of their biggest losses ever. To continue operating, they were forced to take out loans to add to their existing debt. It became so crushing that by 2003, their debt was exceeding their equity, and by 2005, they were paying over $1 billion in interest each year. But look at this. Starting in 2010, they reported 10 straight years of profits. Obviously, that streak did end in 2020, but that's a different issue. So for right now, let's focus on this amazing turnaround and how they did it. My first reason is a little general, but still important. They've adapted a new image. There's so many parts to it. Refurbished cabins, new uniforms, even a new logo. I think that they wanted everything to look and feel differently, to separate themselves from the negative image that they had developed before. And they did say that one of their biggest changes in this new era was their renewed focus on their customers. So for my second reason, much like my first list, I'm gonna combine employees and customers together. Now, I can't say I work for Delta personally, but if you do, I imagine you get paid pretty well. I'm talking about multiple pay increases, an unconventional stock ownership plan, and significant profit sharing bonuses every February, I guess some of which are the biggest in US history. In 2020, they even unveiled this plane with the words thank you on it that was actually spelled out with the names of each of their 90,000 employees. And look, I'm not saying Delta is the best employer in the world. You may very well work for them and have legitimate complaints, but they do appear to put a lot of effort toward making their employees happy that you don't typically see with their competitors. The intention of all of it is to reduce turnover, avoid unionization, currently most of their workforce is not unionized, and to improve customer satisfaction. Happier employees leads to happier customers. It's a hard thing to measure, so on this channel I typically turn to the American Customer Satisfaction Index, and when we look at that, Delta's score has been improving. It was even dipping below the benchmark for a while, making them one of the more disliked airlines, but they have since been scoring among the highest in their industry. Just some of the things I imagine have positively infected that score would be the free snacks, free videos, free Wi-Fi, their reliability, and their on-time record has improved tremendously to become one of the best. There are a lot of potential reasons here, so if you have had any good experiences with Delta Airlines, please share what has made them so special. Alright, my next reason behind the recovery would be their increased emphasis on international flights. Because right out of the bankruptcy, they added an additional 60 international routes. In 2008, this is big, they merged with Northwest Airlines, who had also recently come out of bankruptcy. There is so much that could be said about the combination, but it did form the world's largest airline. Once they were combined, they flew to 375 different cities around the world. Delta has also bought minority stakes in other international airlines, like in 2012, when they bought a 49% stake in Virgin Atlantic. It is simply too much to get into all of the specifics here, but Delta has built up a 
much stronger international presence than they had before the bankruptcy. And one of the motivations to do that is actually to avoid the competition from those low fare domestic airlines that I was talking about before. I would have to say a much better response than when they tried to start that other airline. And another response to it, I'm going to put as my next reason, introducing basic economy fare. In 2012, they came out with a somewhat cheaper ticket option for their already existing flights. Basically, it's a regular ticket for a regular seat, but it's slightly worse in that you don't have the ability to refund it or change it, nor do you have the ability to pick your seat in advance. But as far as I could tell, it's been a successful program that helps address one of their issues. My final reason behind Delta's comeback is buying an oil refinery. You may be shocked to hear that one, and it is debatable as to whether or not it has actually been a positive for them, because the refinery itself has been inconsistent, but it attempts to address one of their issues in an unconventional way, and I have to respect that. In 2020, they bought an oil refinery near Philadelphia as a way to vertically integrate by providing their own fuel. The prices of it tend to go up and down, and this was their way to try to take control of it. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Delta Airlines? Do you think the service and experience and whatever else is enough to justify the likely higher price over some of the competitors? And if you are a longtime Delta flyer, I'm curious, what are the changes that you've noticed? As I've outlined in this video, the company that exists today is much different than it used to be, so how have you noticed it firsthand? And finally, do you agree with my list regarding their ups and downs, or do you think there's more to it? I mean, there's definitely more to it. This is a wide subject to cover in this amount of time, but do you think I hit on the most important parts? And any other thoughts you have about Delta Airlines, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Today's video is sponsored by Grammarly. There's a free version of it that already will save you from spelling, grammar, and punctuation mistakes. Some of the features of it include a built-in tone detector that gives you a second opinion on how you come across, a double-click synonym feature that gives you replacement options for a word, and a goal feature that will set your audience in desired tone. And I should mention that you can access all of this from your desktop or your phone, but lately I've started using Grammarly Premium to help make these videos sound better. Maybe one of my favorite features of that would be the clarity suggestions, because one of my biggest concerns is someone getting lost or confused while watching my videos. Like, look at this. I had written, Windows were now able to overlap with each other, but it turns out it's more concise and easier to follow if I take their advice and say Windows could now overlap with each other. I like the vocabulary suggestions too. In that same sentence, they recommend that I change the word big to significant because big is overused. To sign up for a free account, go to grammarly.com slash company man. That's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash company man. And new customers will get 20% off Grammarly premium, which I think is worth the upgrade. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.